I want to conclude this series on prayer by looking at an example of when God's people prayed and how God answered. Earlier we looked at the example of Jesus. I also want to take time to look at the example of the early church just to understand some of the dynamics of prayer that went into a powerful uh, answer to prayer. Uh, from God to his people. Now, this is going to be found in Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 31. And, and the prayer begins in verse 24 by showing us that prayer appeals to the character of God. Let's take a look. The context here is when uh, Peter and John were brought before the high council of the Jews and were flogged and warned seriously not to speak in the name of Jesus ever again anymore. They came back to the church and reported everything that had happened to them, everything that they were told. And then in verse 24 says that when the church heard this, together they raised their voices in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. And the first thing they did was recognize God. They said, Sovereign Lord, that's the God who is in charge of everything in the universe. They're appealing to God's power, that God is greater than any human opposition, that God is far more powerful than the power of, of these people who are trying to uh, shut down the message of the gospel. And so the first thing about prayer is it's an appeal to the character of God. That's a great place to begin. And then we see in their prayer that the second thing is, is they appealed to the purposes of God. And we see that in verses 27 and 28. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. And so they're reflecting on this opposition from the Jewish leaders and from the Roman leaders um, against them, and they realize that this is really part of something bigger that God was doing. This is exactly the same kind of opposition that Jesus had faced when he died on the cross. And, and that was something that God had used, that, that was actually an important part of God's plan to bring about salvation. And so they, they realized that what Pilate and Herod had done is what God's power and will had decided beforehand should happen. And so they realized that what was happening to them was within the purposes of God, that God had a larger purpose, a salvation purpose that he brought forth from the persecution of Jesus, and he was going to do the same thing in their lives, in their experience as well. And then the next thing we see from this prayer is that prayer factors in God's part and our part. And let me show you what I mean by that in verses 29 and 30. Verse 29, they're praying, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. That's our part. Their prayer took into account what their role was to be. They were supposed to go out and speak the word of Christ. Jesus had told them, you're going to be my witnesses. And so they knew that they, were, they needed to go out and speak for Christ. And so they're asking God to enable them to do their part. But prayer also encompasses God's part. In verse 30, they're asking God to stretch out his hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. That's something that only God could do. Speaking the word with boldness is something only they could do, and the miracles that would follow are only something that God could do. And then here's what happened next. It says in verse 31, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So God acted. He filled them with the Spirit. And then they did what they had prayed for God's help to do. They went out and spoke God's word boldly. So this is a great example of the early church in prayer. And it shows us that Whenever we face a challenge, whenever we face a need, that God answers prayer that lines up with both his character and his purposes. And when our prayer connects with and appeals to God's character, and when it connects with God's purposes, then that's a prayer that God is inclined to answer.
Now, for the discussion question, this is our last session together. So I, I want you to think about the whole series on prayer and think about the things that you've learned in this series that might help you draw closer to God in a living relationship with Him. Why don't you identify those things and discuss them together?